In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. May the Father of mercies, the God of all consolation, be with you. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Keats died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Please join us in hymn 364, I Am the Bread of Life. Hymn 364. God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Keats, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. I invite Mark to come forward for our first reading. reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 19 and 20. No longer will the sun, <clears throat> excuse me, no longer will the sun be your light by day, or the moon be your light by night. I, the Lord, will be your eternal light. The light of my glory will shine on you. The days of your grief will come to an end. I, the Lord, will be your eternal light, more lasting than the sun and the moon. A reading from the
Jerry to come forward for the second reading. The second reading is from John, chapter 4, verses 7 to 12. Dear friends, let us love one another, because love comes from God. Whoever loves is a child of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. And God showed his love for us by sending his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. This is what love is. It is not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the means by which our sins are forgiven. Dear friends, If this is how God loved us, then we should love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in union with us, and his love is made perfect in us. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus told them. Believe in God and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house, and I am going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. You know the way that leads to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. Now that you have known me, he said to them, you will know my Father also, and from now on you do know him, and you have seen him. When I go, you will not be left all alone. I will come back to you. In a little while, the world will see me no more, but you will see me. And because I live, you also will live. When that day comes, you will know that I am in my Father and that you are in me, just as I am in you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A good man. That's the expression I heard over the last few days in trying to describe Keats Boyd. A good man. We can complete the the sentence or the description in various ways. He was a good husband. I'm sure Ina would say he was a great husband. Except when referring to his profession as a lawyer, I think we most always referred to them as a couple. It was always Ina and Keats. They were joined at the hip, always together. Married just a few days shy of 57 years. They worked together, played together, prayed together here at Christ the King. I think it's 18 years that they have wintered in Naples. I once asked... I know. Why is it that you hire someone to drive your car down and you two fly? And she said, I'd rather take my chances flying with terrorists than driving with Keats. (laughs) He was a good man. A father who loved his three children and it broke his heart when Bonnie lost her battle with cancer. Boyd and Boyd was a family affair. Keats, and then who they referred to as young Keats, we'll have to change that description, they worked the legal end, and Chris's financial business was in the same building. And both Wendy and Kristen worked with their spouses. His grandson, Matt, worked with him for a couple of years before moving off Cape. And before her tragic death, Bonnie worked in the law office. Ina worked there for over 30 years. Talk about it being all in the family. He was a great grandfather to seven. A good lawyer who guided his clients for decades. And for any of you who have had the pleasure of going on the party boat, you know that he not only made a good margarita, but a great margarita. 
He actually won a contest in Florida among their circle of friends for having the best margarita of the day. After communion, Keats and Chris will share more thoughts about their father. At this point, we focus on the faith that Keats shared, a faith that makes all the difference in the world when we face death, whether it's Keats or our own. He was not only a good man, but was God's man. The readings that the family selected remind us of this faith component of Keats. Isaiah reminded us that our grief will come to an end, but not in this life, because grief is that price we pay for having loved someone and having been loved by someone. The grief may dull, but it never completely disappears. Isaiah goes on to proclaim that God is our eternal life, more lasting than the sun and the moon. Maybe we can recall that when we have all the talk about the eclipse this week, that God's love is greater than both sun and moon. We pray that Keats is now basking in that eternal light. In his letter, John reminds us that we don't do anything to cause God to love us. He loves us first and freely. What we're called to do is to respond to that love by loving others. Keats knew that he was loved by God, and he certainly loved others in return. Finally, John's Gospel reminds us that Jesus left his disciples with a reminder that his Father's house has many rooms and that he's going to prepare a place for us and will take us to himself. Our prayer is that the Lord now take Keats to himself. We pray that he is given eternal rest and peace until we meet again. I invite those who are doing our prayer of the faithful to come forward, and I invite the congregation to stand. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For the sick and the dying, that they will find comfort in the Lord and receive his healing power. For the emergency workers, nurses, and doctors, especially those who treated Keats throughout his illness, while at Leahy Medical Center. May God work through their efforts to bring healing to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that all the disciples of Jesus Christ work together to further the kingdom of God. For the parish of Christ the King, who have been a spiritual family and have enriched Keats' life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May the leaders of nations work toward greater peace. May the Lord inspire us all to be more open to one another. Listen before speaking. Be motivated by love and more tolerant of our differences. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families, may parents raise their children in love. Children, Care for your aging parents. Family, be what you are. May we teach each other to be men and women in service of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the hungry, the homeless, 
and those without the essentials of living. May, may we all care for one another with generosity of spirit to help those in need. For those people who are broken, may your love bring them healing. For those in developing economies, may they find stability in governance and economy, opportunity in order to help everyone meet their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, we especially pray for Keats. May they and he be received by the Lord into the warmth of his loving embrace. May the happiness of eternal life be theirs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite those who are bringing up the gifts of bread and wine to come to the center aisle and for the congregation to be seated. Last night I lay a sleeping, there came a dream so fair. I stood in old Jerusalem beside the temple there. I heard the children singing, and ever as they sang, we thought the voice of angels from heaven in answer.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be near, O Lord, we pray, to your servant Keats, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of conciliation, so that, should any stain of sin have clung to him, or any human fault have affected him, it may, by your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Edgar our Bishop, and all the clergy religious, and the people of God. Remember your servant Keats, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am worthy that you should enter under my room. But only to say the word.
and down, and oh, my soul so weary. When troubles come and my heart burdened be, then I am still and wait here in the silence until you come and sit a while with me. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. Without its hunger, each restless heart beats so imperfectly. But when you come and I am filled with wonder, sometimes I think I glimpse eternity. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up. On stormy seas, I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on storm. I am strong when I am on your shoulders. You raise me up to more than I can be. You raise me up to more than I can be. by Keats and Chris to come forward to share some thoughts. On behalf of my mother, my brother, our wives and families, my brother-in-law, his wife and sons, and all our relatives here today, thank you for being here to express your support and sadness at the loss of my father. The best eulogies seem to provide a glimpse into the life of the deceased. They share a poignant anecdote, cause one to laugh and cry. My remarks by this measure may fall short. So, Keats, we're counting on you. No pressure. I just hope that I'm not the one who cries. F. Keats Boyd Jr. was a credit to humanity. He enriched all the communities in which he participated, professional, residential, and faith. What can be said to sum up this man and his relevance how does one sum up the extraordinary qualities of an amazing person in five minutes or less? How does one briefly impart lessons from a life lived by a man such as this and do him justice? You're all here because you know at least some of the aspects of the answer to this, either because you knew him and respected, 
cared for or loved him, or because you know and care for his family, which provides some insight about him. What are some of the qualities and characteristics that come to mind when thinking about Keats Boyd? Integrity. Intellect. Wisdom. Dignified. Compassionate. Counselor, not merely as a professional title, but as a descriptive of his thoughtful nature and interest in giving advice. He was a gentle man and a mannered gentleman. He had a great laugh. You couldn't help but love it when he got a good laugh going. Loud and hearty and the tears seeping out the sides of his face. Perhaps watching something silly like Abbott and Costello or a Farrelly Brothers movie. He was a great host, the maker of cocktails. Married to Ina, how could he be anything but? Nobody made a better margarita, as was mentioned, and whether it was uh, wine or punch, he was quick to pour you a refill. He was energized by discussion and often political discussion. People thought he was a good tipper. That was really, they didn't hear what was going on in the background. My mom, Keats, you should really give him a good tip. He was great. Is that all? No, you should do more. We'll do more next time. Entrepreneur. We laid out the details of this in his obituary, but focusing on the business he built, Boyd and Boyd will provide him a legacy of service. Educator. Anyone who knew him, uh, saw him cut to conduct a seminar would agree. In his youth, he liked to perform in theater, and seminars gave him an opportunity to present, perform, and inform, all of which he did well. You had to recognize that he was trying to give you helpful understanding of information you needed to know. Faithful. His Roman Catholic faith was very important to him, and he found comfort and enrichment in the sacraments. Friend. So many of you could tell your own stories about him as friend. Father and husband. How can one think of him without thinking of him as a husband and father? My mother-in-law, Terry, mentioned to me uh, the other day that uh, you can hardly even think of saying, I know, without saying, and Keats. There were peas in a pod. Like anyone... No doubt they had their disagreements, but they were exceptional. Their love was deep. Tomorrow would have been their 57th wedding anniversary, but what was special was they truly enjoyed being together. They are, were, best friends and spouses. I know my mother would uh, be thankful, or is thankful for the many years together and time spent with friends in Mashpee in Florida that they took time to travel and enjoy each other. They loved working and playing together. They built a life together and can be proud. As a father, Dad was always quick to be of help. He was the helper of the homework with reports. I'm sure I violated Funk and White's Elements of Style, Rule 13, Avoid Needless Words. Uh, He shared his love of sailing and boating and has infected us all. Uh, These were great times because they were times to uh, just talk one-on-one. We had special times in Florida and in our youth, summers on Cape Cod and Columbus days on getaways in Vermont. When I started my business, he pointed me toward a fee-based investment advisory service and gave me space in his office and gave me financial support when things were getting started. So, what is the measure of a man? Wealth is fleeting. If it's achievement, he could be proud as a result of the, um, as a result that was um, better than most. Sorry. Friendships. By this measure, he was a man of greatness. Just looking around. Family. 
well for this category. Of course, I'm biased, and uh, but I think we family members would tell you that he was best in class. Five stars for Dad. He always was generous to us in time, attention, counsel, and care. When Bonnie was ill, he was perpetually present and involved. He's always been great to his grandkids, encouraging good grades, and especially for Matt and Jim after the passing of their mom. What is the measure of a man? Love. If love is the final measure of a man, watch out Buffett and Gates. By this measure, Keats Boyd was a giant. I'm probably going to violate Rule 13 as well. There are so many things we can share with you about my dad. I'd like to share what I think is probably his greatest accomplishment. Those of you who know my father know that he was often intellectual. Maybe he gave the appearance that the head should rule over the heart. His legal education, rooted in the Socratic method, gave him an analytical mind. His liberal arts training at Holy Cross gave him an appreciation for the Renaissance man. He developed many skills, law, philosophy, theology, finance, investment strategies, mixology, and our family's favorite sport, politics. <laughs> he brought a level of academic enthusiasm to all of his interests, wine and food, boating, and most importantly for all of us who would visit during cocktail hour, his margaritas. I think you're sensing a theme here. <laughs> How many people have margaritas on tap in their refrigerator? <laughs> Our dad did. He'd be proud to know that a friend of ours recently described his Ritas as a picture of Mexican magic. As an adult, I realized, however, that my father was ruled more by the heart. It was merely the application of his training that made it appear otherwise. For example, when Wendy and I started the process of adopting Anya and Ilya, we needed to describe our parenting philosophies. It was then my mom shared a story about my dad. She said that before I was born, my dad discussed with her which was more important in raising children, structure and discipline or love. My dad's answer was love. Looking back over his life, it is love that has governed his life and guided his decisions. Our dad liked to lead by example. Bonnie, Chris, and I all learned by the example of Keats and Ina that we should look for a spouse who is our best friend, who gives us 100%, to whom we should give 100%, who in some way tries to make us better people and bring us closer to God. In fact, his final, his final advice to Matt and Emily was just that, to love each other. How lucky we have all been to have had that for an example and then for all of us to actually have found a spouse who helps us live that message. Our dad and mom, like everyone, faced trials and tribulations. Perhaps the greatest of these was the loss of my sister Bonnie. Shortly after my dad passed while driving home, my mom told me that Bonnie's passing actually brought them closer to each other and closer to God. Think of that. Ina and Keats found God's grace and presence in that tragedy and in that grace grew closer together. Shortly before his passing, Dad spoke with Chris and I. He said how important it is to be in a business that serves others. He viewed our firm as one of his greatest gifts he could give our family. It provided for us, sent us to colleges, provided for weddings, paid for houses, and countless other things. But most importantly, the firm gave us the chance to be together day after day. I am so blessed to have been able to spend so many days with my dad, my mom, Bonnie, Chris, Wendy, Kristen, Ed, and Matt, working together and providing for each other. Some of our fondest memories are of having a working lunch with our dad. At first, this lunch was a chance to grab a hamburger, catch up on how things were going at law school for me. Eventually, our lunches were many staff meetings, during which we'd have a hamburger and strategize the cases and firm's future. Later, after we moved to the Cape, we were both prescribed Lipitor, so our lunch meetings had to be moved. And since statins really work, we could still center our lunch around that hamburger at Burger King or McDonald's. Our discussions were joined then by Chris and branched into the stock market, investment strategies, politics, religion, and faith. 
These daily lunch breaks seemed so unimportant at the time, yet today they are probably some of my favorite memories of times when we bonded and planned for the future. I like to believe he loved these as much as I, and since his retirement I have found I miss these times the most. Keats was a man of great faith. My dad was inspired after Vatican II. He and my mother hosted discussion groups, often had mass offered at our home by their priest friends from Our Lady of Fatima. My parents, usually my dad, homeschooled our CCD. Bonnie's and Chris's first communion took place in our home. I remember as a teen, we often went to mass at Pope John XXIII Seminary in Weston. It was meaningful for my dad and for all of us in terms of spiritual nurturing we received and from the music ministry that added so much to our experience there. Years later, my parents discovered St. Anne's Parish and its, in, and its incredible music ministry. Eventually, my parents traveled to the Holy Land once with Father Coletti and once with Father, uh, excuse me, Monsignor Tosti. Old habits, Monsignor, I'm sorry. They often speak of those trips as wonderful memories. My father and mother love coming to Mass here at Christ the King. It's funny when I stop to think about our ties to this parish. They go back to the early 1960s. We've gone to Mass at the community building in Papanesset and what is now the Children's Museum and eventually here at Christ the King. This is a very rare place in my family's experience. It is a place of great community. It's a place of love, a place where we have so often found Christ's presence. My dad loved the music ministry here, and while he rarely sang himself, he felt that the choir added to the beauty of the celebration of the Mass. Of course, he always valued those who gave so many meaningful homilies, especially all of you who are here today to help celebrate his life. My simple thank you cannot say enough. It's just somewhat inadequate. Ilya reminded me the other day that I brought my dad his last Holy Communion the Sunday before he passed. Uh, Chris and I both had the privilege of uh, learning from a theologian named Bernie Cook, who once anal uh, analogized the Eucharist that it is like a sentence. And as you know, in order to have a complete sentence, there are two required components, a noun and a verb, a person and an action. In this case, the Eucharist, uh, with the bread and the wine being the nouns, and the breaking and sharing are the verbs. I think, of the, I think that this teaching of Professor Cook, when extrapolated a little bit, really summarizes the faith of my father and his greatest accomplishment. As Catholics, we feel that by practicing the sacraments, we are given the opportunity to receive God's grace and thereby grow closer to God. In many ways, so many of the sacraments are like sentences too. Marriage, holy orders, reconciliation requires a person and some action by that person to give God's grace. But when boiled down to their simplest, each of these sacraments are just a one-word sentence, love. After all, isn't love both a noun and a verb? Doesn't love, like the sacraments, bring us closer to God? In today's second reading, John reminds us, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. John also wrote, God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. If we are to summarize my father's life, his greatest accomplishment, and his impact on our little corner of the world, we would have to say that he lived a life of love. Love of God, love of Ina, love of family, love of friends and clients. In doing so, he brought those around him, those who were touched by his life, closer to God. Keats was the noun and love was his verb. He lived that sacramental sentence. As such, his life was complete, and while we were not ready for his passing, he had completed his work in this world. For our part, we feel blessed to have had Keats as our dad. He was and is an example of God the Father. We looked into his eyes and saw love and therefore saw God. May each of you keep your memories of Keats in the forefront of your mind. May those thoughts and memories of our dad, his love for you and your love for him, stay with you and help to bring you closer to God and life ever, laughter, life ever after. Together with Keats and all of those we have loved, and for now at least, with those whom we cannot be.
Let us stand for our final prayers. Lord God, your Son, Jesus Christ, gave us the sacrament of his body and blood to guide us on our pilgrim way to your kingdom. May our brother Keats, who shared in the Eucharist, come to the banquet of life Christ has prepared for us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Trusting in our loving God, we have prayed together for our kids. Now we come to this farewell. There is sadness in the party, but we also take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Keats again and enjoy his love forever. Although we go forth in sorrow, it is the love and the mercy of God that will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom to console one another with the precious gift of our faith in Jesus, the Lord of all life. <clears throat> Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Keats in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks, Father, for the many blessings that you gave Keats in this life, the blessings of faith, of family, of friends, and of parish and the many blessings that you gave to each one of us who keeps. They are signs to us of your goodness and our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Father, turn to us. Listen to our prayer as you always do. Open the gates of eternal life to your servant and help us who remain to comfort each other with the assurances of our faith until we all meet in Christ Jesus and are with you and with Keats forever. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the peace of Christ, let us take our brother Keats to his place of rest. Please join us in our closing hymn, hymn 494, We Remember. Hymn 494. Oh, no.